Um, so chapter number six, uh, which is step number six, and one that I am so passionate about, which is educating and empowering women to be financially fit. Uh, that is a chapter, there was no way I was going to write a book on balance and not hit that chapter because, as you all know, money is a real stress in many people's lives. And so to be balanced financially, to be empowered financially is very important. So that's what I'm going to focus on today. But before I do, I'm going to tell you a little secret about myself. Uh, besides my children, my two little girls, I have two extreme passions in my life. Finances and accessories. And, uh, yeah, the accessories. It's already out there, but I'll, I'll just disclose it again. Um, when I was very young, this, this obsession, I will say, started at a very young age, at like five. My parents had some Western stores and restaurants. I grew up in the Central Valley, and my mom would do the books. And what she did was she set up out of a cardboard box because I wanted to be there, right there with her. And you know, I was bugging her instead of playing in the back with my siblings. She set up this box with a calculator, an accounting ledger at five and a whole bunch of change. And then my dad handed me my first tote, which for men, that's a handbag. And it had this very prestigious label. It said Bank of America across of it. And it was his banking bag. You know the money bags they used to go back and forth? to the banquet, so I was in heaven at five. I literally for hours would sit and calculate and calculate and calculate. So there is no surprise today that I'm a financial planner um, and get to spend countless hours doing what I love, which is helping um, people plan for retirement, plan their lives. Uh, but I know and I recognize that not most women feel that same. You know, I have a lot of women friends that just say, you're a nerd geek. You know, just you, you and the numbers, it's crazy. Um, but what I try to get across to women, and this is what I want to spend some time talking about today, I don't need you to have the passion that I have about finances. I just want you to be empowered to be able to do it, to take over your finances if you had to. So that's what we're going to talk about. I think Erna shared with you some stats, and I'm just going to remind you these stats again. Two-thirds of the wealth in the U.S. over the next decade will be controlled by women. By women. Two-thirds. I know. <laughs> She's like, woo -hoo! Uh, 80 to 90 percent of you will control... Women, let me back up, 80 to 90% of you will control your wealth, your finances at some point in your life. Isn't that amazing? 80 to 90% of you because of either death or divorce. And then the final stat, this is what kills me, and this is why I work so hard to educate women, is only 2 in 10 women are financially prepared, feel the knowledge to actually take care of their finances. So you think about it, you're going to control the finances, but you're not ready to control the finances. You're not, you're not feeling safe and secure to make those decisions. And so, and I see it. Every day in my office, I see women that walk in that are, that lose a husband, that are faced with divorce, and look at me and say, I have no clue where to start. It. No clue. So today what I want to do is really go over um, Three simple steps of what I want you to do to be financially empowered. You do these three steps, you will be financially empowered. For the men in the room, these are steps that I want you to go share with your wife. Yep, you're going to go home and say, honey, we're doing a tutorial. If you handle all of the finances and your wife is really not involved, it's not going to be fun. I know that it's not sexy to talk about finances. It's much more exciting to talk about our romance chapter. But you need to sit her down and maybe you do a date night and you say, you know what? Every six months, we're just going to go back to the drawing board and we're going to talk about what's going on fiscally under our roof. That's it. Every six months. I know you're not going to love it. Half of this you might not understand, but I'm going to keep talking about it. For the women in the room, if you are the ones who are not controlling your finances, Please take the time 
to go home and ask your husband or your spouse or your significant other, let's talk about it. So the first step, understanding your cash flow. So I say that to people and they go, what do you mean? <laughs> Very simple. What's coming in and what's going out? Pretty simple, right? But here's the kicker, 85% of the purchases ladies are made by us. 85% women control all the outflow of money, which is great, right? <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, but most families have no clue where their whole paychecks are going. So ladies, if we're controlling where the money is going, you have got to really spend time to say, where am I spending my expenses? And people say, well, why? Why is it so important? You know, I live this lifestyle, especially in this area. Many of my clients, they don't need to be on a budget. It, it, we live in a, a very nice area, very comfortable. We make a lot of money. You don't need to be on a budget. But here's the kicker. You get into retirement. And all of a sudden, people like me, you sit in front of a financial planner and you say, well, what is your lifestyle? Let's talk about how much you need to sustain your lifestyle. And then you get the deer in the headlights look. Well, I don't know. Well, how can we plan for your retirement if you've never tracked what your lifestyle is? So how do we do this? Many folks use software programs. There's, there's so many great software programs out there to use. Um, there's great apps now where little, you know, you can, you can punch it in within seconds. Um, or you could do the old Excel spreadsheet, which I still today have many clients that do that. Once you start tracking your expenses, and here, here's where a lot of you right now are going, oh, Michelle, I'm not going to go back 12 months and pull out what I spent. That just seems horrible. And I know it is. It's help. I'm not going to try to say it's not help. It's help. So let's do this. Instead of going back, because the success rate is very low, when you go and pull all your statements, it's not going to work. Start July 1st and start tracking everything July 1st for six months. That's it. Don't go back. Just move forward. Pick a program. Start tracking it. Do it once a week input or every night. And after six months, what I want you to do then is sit down and evaluate your spending patterns. Some people try to do it too fast. They, after like two months, they start looking at their spending patterns. And I say, no, there's cycles in the year. Christmas, we spend a lot more. Summertime, we spend a lot more. January, February, everybody's panicked from the holidays. They don't, they, they don't spend as much. So you really need a six-month period of time to evaluate your spending patterns. And once you do that, then you can look at, okay, maybe I'm spending a little too much here. I could drop it and save a little bit more. That's where the evaluation begins. And, and don't look at it as a budget, unless you need to be on a budget, then that's a whole nother conversation. But what we want to do is I want you to understand what's going in and going out. Going in and going out. Number two. Have a clear financial plan in place. So what does that mean? A clear financial plan is how much do I need in emergency reserves? How much do I really need in retirement savings that correlates to my lifestyle, right? Because you just spent all this time on your living expenses and the drill wasn't just because it was so much fun to do. It was because we want to know how much do you need in retirement? Um, how much do I need for my kids' college savings? You would be shocked how many folks walk into my office at 60 years old and say, Michelle, game over, I'm retiring. They've never seen a financial planner. I just met them, and they say, I want to retire. I've never seen a financial planner, never done a financial plan, but I'm retiring this year. And I go, wait, what? Hold on. We got to start out, we got to back up a little bit. How, 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 we can't just all of a sudden have you retire without these clear plans to make sure you're not going to run out of money. And that's the ultimate, that's what keeps me up at night 24 7 worrying about my clients is making sure they never run out of money. So if you have never done a financial plan, 
what it entails is really meeting with an advisor and giving them your life, giving them your assets, your liabilities, your spending patterns, your F down to the penny, what you're spending in those categories, talking about your struggles financially. Yes, it is like a therapy session in my office most of the time. Um, your financial advisor should be one of the most, if not the most important professionals in your life. Hands down. Um, so I really urge you to get a financial plan in place if you don't have one already. Pull your spouse into those meetings. I have so many men who come into my office without their wife and it kills me and I just nag them every time. Why isn't Sue here? Eh, she didn't want to come. Bring her next time. He comes six months later. Sue's not there. Why isn't Sue there? I call Sue, Sue, you're coming next time. Even we'll go get drinks, you know. I don't care what I have to do to bribe her to get her in there. It is important that your significant other is there with you at those meetings with the financial planner, with the insurance agent, with the CPA, with the estate planner. I know there are going to be terminology that you say, I have no clue what she is talking about. Say, you need to repeat that start over again. That's fine. That's what we're there to educate you. Um, and then step number three. You're not overwhelmed yet, right? I'm kind of seeing some eyes starting to glaze. Are we okay? We're okay. We're doing okay. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. So step number three, um, one that I'm very passionate about, organizing all of your finances your financial affairs, your estate, and your personal affairs in one location. Okay, so this is the kicker. So let me ask you, and you don't need to nod, I'm not trying to embarrass you, just think about this question. If I asked you today, if you passed away, or if you got ill today, do you feel that you have everything organized for your heirs? No. No, oh, that's good. <laughs> Honesty. Everything's so, in my wife's underwear drawer. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's why I do my we, stuff, too. Now we know who's B-O-S-S in this room. <laughs> so what I mean by that is important context. Let's kind of go through what I mean by this question. And I'm not talking about wills and trusts, because people say to me, oh yeah, I got my will and trust done. And they think, oh, once I got my estate plan done, that binder, I am set. I'm not talking about that. That's in addition to all these other things I'm going to download. Important contacts. All the professionals that matter to you, down to who's your gardener, pool guy, etc. I had a client pass away last year. They're, the kids fly out and they look at me and they go, Michelle, and, and the poor guy, he just never wanted to fill out this binder, but I scribbled as much as I could for him. And um, they said, we don't know who the pool guy is. We don't know who the gardener is. I, I, his office is a mess. There's bills everywhere. There's people. I don't, you know. So when your children are mourning, the last thing they are going to want to do is try to figure out who's the pool guy that's showing up on Tuesdays. Um, medical history. Insurance. <laughs> Policies. You would be shocked how many insurance policies are never claimed because they're never found by your heirs. Uh, private security and access information. Today we live in this world of technology. Remember the good old days? It was like you asked dad, where's all your stuff, dad? Still this day my dad's like this. He's like, you know, the filing cabinet, that one filing cabinet. Everything was in the filing cabinet before computers. Now when I ask clients, okay, is the binder filled out? Where, where is everything? I'm still getting it together. I have a little bit on my computer. I have a little bit in the safe deposit box. I have a little bit in the safe. Oh yeah, and I have a little bit in the drawer. And I'm like, oh. And so you picture this is what heirs now are starting to go through. How am I shutting down all of mom and dad's social medias? How am I paying these bills online when I didn't even know what they had going online, automatic, this, that? So technology has made this even more complex for our heirs when you pass away or get sick. Pet information. Here's another one. Last year kids fly out, dad passes away. What are we supposed to do with this dog? We live in Florida. What do we do with this dog? 
Um, you were supposed to take the dog. I'm not taking the dog. You know, so you, you think you do all this planning for yourself. There's nowhere in the state plan that says what's happened to little Sparky here. So pet information, what's he eat, who's the vet, funeral arrangements. Uh, you know, a lot of folks say to me, oh, Michelle, I'm getting cremated. It's easy. Well, okay, that, that's one little part of your funeral arrangements. Again, think about it. When you pass away, do you want your children scrambling to write your obituary? Or it, and that's what happens. Or do you want to put some details that are really important to you? I was very active in the Rotary Club. That meant a lot to many of you. Don't you want that in your, you know, and there's things that you have to remember, kids or your heirs are in a panic if something happens to you. They don't want to have to deal with these many details. Real estate, personal property, oh, personal property. Here's another one. Yesterday, clients in my office, he goes, I have a, tw no, what was it, $50,000 guitar. I'm like, you do? He's like, oh, yeah. I have it up in the closet. Hey. I'm like, does your son know about this guitar? No. Nope. Does he know what it's worth? Nope. He probably would sell it at a garage sale. Put it in the binder. And he had it appraised. He has a broker that would sell it right away. So, you know, he has everything. It's just writing it down, organized in one spot. Debt, retirement, investments, all those things, one spot. So. You know, I don't care if you end up using the binder I created, the everything binder that has the 17 tabs and all that. It doesn't matter. I just want you to do it. Because th once you do it, you will travel with peace. You'll feel this peace of mind. The key, though, is all this information has to be safe. That's the bottom line. You can't just go do this binder and then leave it laying on your desk. You need to store it safely either in your safe um, or put it on a thumb drive, put it in your safe deposit box, and then tell your errors. If anything happens to me, here's my estate binder, here's my everything binder, my emergency binder. Everything you need is right there. That's it. If you feel comfortable going over with your errors, then do so. A lot of the women, believe it or not, fill out the binders. So I've loved that because it's given them the ability to really sit down with their husband and say, where is this? Where is that? Where is this? Um, so I've really enjoyed watching my clients kind of gain this empowerment by, by getting everything together. Um, so right now, hopefully your brain is not exploding and you're not going, oh, that's a lot. Um, what you really need to do though, don't take all these three steps and try to do it at one time. You need to just take one step, attack it for a couple months, do the next step, attack it, do the living expenses, then maybe do your financial plan then hit the estate planning, personal finances all in one spot uh, um, as your next game plan. Because it will take time. You'll want to backpedal. You'll want to hit the reset button. You'll, you'll want to just probably cuss me out a few times by doing these different, um, these different drills. But remember, two-thirds of the wealth will be controlled by women who are not ready to take on finance.